Hello, everyone. My name is David Abell. I live in East Greenwich, Rhode Island, and I'm an advocate for hearing loops. I work with the Hearing Loss Association of America and with the Rhode Island Commission for the Deaf and Hard of Hearing. On this call today are Myron Waldman and Joyce May. Myron is a hearing loop advocate also and the creator of hearingloopri.org, the website for our hearing loop initiative in Rhode Island. Myron, say hello. Thank you. Joyce is the Assistant Director of Adult Services of the East Providence Public Library which recently installed a hearing loop in its Champlin program room. Joyce, say hello. Thank you. We will hear from both of them later. I retired uh, from uh, practicing law in 2010 and became interested in hearing loops because I've been hard of hearing and wearing hearing aids for about 25 years. I have a hearing loss of uh, 60 to 70 decibels in both ears. That's a moderate to severe hearing loss and very poor speech discrimination. I've been told I only have about 20% left. This is all due to age. I turned 85 last year. Uh, genetics, my mother and her father had hearing loss. And I flew noisy helicopters for three years for the Marine Corps while I was in active duty in ancient history. I've been working with the Hearing Loss Association of America and the Rhode Island chapter and the commission, advocating for hearing loops since 2013. Along the way, we've helped many places to install hearing loops, starting with my church in Wickford, and going out to several other churches and other places in the state. And about three years ago, we did a statewide survey of hearing assistive technology generally, uh, which those of us in this uh, refer to as HAT, H-A-T, Hearing Assistive Technology. We have the assistance of a graduate student at URI, and we surveyed every place that we could figure out and discovered that, yes, there were an awful lot of FM systems and infrared systems in classrooms and all sorts of places, but it was extremely difficult to find out whether they were working, who used them, and um, we suspected that we missed a great deal. So we don't really attempt to keep track of those, but we did discover that there were only four hearing loops, large area hearing loops in Rhode Island at the time. Now there are 21. We got a major boost last year when the State House installed hearing loops in the legislative floors of the Senate and House of Representatives. Uh, the State House now has a total of eight hearing loops, including ones in both the public galleries of the House and Senate and in several major hearing rooms. This success is largely due to Frank Montanaro, Executive Director of the Joint Committee on Legislative Services, with the active support of Speaker Mattiello. Our latest one, of course, is in the East Providence Public Library. We'll hear more about that later. Now I want to explain what a hearing loop is and how, why it's important to people who are hard of hearing. This is a picture of the sign that you will see at a location where a hearing loop is located. And it, uh, gives you an important bit of information. First of all, there's a hearing loop there, and it tells the user to switch the hearing aid to T-coil. All that means is that the user, when they walk into this place, 
only has to change the setting on the hearing aid or their cochlear implant in order to use the loop. You don't have to tell anybody, borrow any equipment or anything else. This is a picture of a hearing loop. Uh, it's pretty simple in concept when you think about it. Uh, the speaker or other sound source has a microphone and that transmits to the hearing loop amplifier. The hearing loop amplifier creates an electrical current which is sent around the copper wire which surrounds the seating area. That creates a magnetic field overlying everybody in that area. So no matter how many people are seated in there that want to use the hearing loop, they can. You can have one person or a hundred people using it at the same time. It's completely seamless. The user ends up with a direct connection from the microphone being used by the speaker to the hearing aid of the user. A hearing aid is known technically as a magnetic induction loop. Magnetic induction loops uh, were discovered in the mid 19th century by Michael Faraday, who anybody who's taken high school physics knows about. Since then, <clears throat> it has been radically improved to the point where in Europe, and particularly in England and the Scandinavian countries, there's literally a hearing loop almost every place you go, in every church, every public venue, even in all the taxi cabs, there's a hearing loop. So it's a very well-known technology used by everybody around. Now the hearing loop solves three important things that are troublesome for a person with a, who is hard of hearing. The first one is distance from the speaker. When you think about it, if the speaker is very far away, even a hearing person has a lot of trouble understanding. And if they're using a microphone and a PA system, if you're very far away from the public speaker, the sound speaker, uh, the sound is degraded. <clears throat> this is not much of a problem for hearing people. But for those of us who are hard of hearing, it makes a huge difference. The second issue is echo or reverberation. In a large venue, such as a church or a lecture hall, particularly one that has marble floors and walls like a lot of Catholic churches, the sound that comes out of the speakers bounces up to the ceiling, bounces off the walls, hits the floor, and for every signal that comes directly from the speaker, you have multiple additional sounds of exactly the same sound, but from different places and at different times. So the person who is hard of hearing receives multiple inputs from every sound they have, and it ends up sounding like mush. You just can't understand it. In these places, a large hearing loop around a seated area that I showed you is very helpful to people who are hard of hearing. The third aspect of it is that because there's a direct connection magnetically and electrically between the hearing aid user and the speaker's microphone, uh, all of the background noise is eliminated. Uh, there are different settings on the hearing aid that allows you to control that. Uh, but it's particularly important in a noisy place like a grocery store or a, um, uh, <clears throat> a customer service uh, desk in a store or the prescription counter at the drugstore. Well, there's lots of ambient noise. Uh, when you step in front of the hearing loop on the counter, you're going to get a direct signal from the person who's speaking into the microphone on the other side. The result is a clear, easily understandable sound, enabling us to hear and understand the speaker, 
It's just as if the speaker was right next to your ear. Now I'll turn to Myron Waldman, who will tell us about the Rhode Island Hearing Loop Initiative. Myron, your turn. Thank you, Dave. I also struggle with hearing loss in a hearing world. As a kid, people would say that they could hear watches tick, the days of ticking watches. And I thought they were pulling, they were putting me on, pulling my leg. Over the years, I improved my environment by making its speech accessible for myself using technology solutions, including hearing aids. For the last 25 years, I've had a profound hearing loss. During those years, I was very active in advocating for people with disabilities and mainly hearing loss. I discovered hearing loops about 30 years ago and found that I could easily assemble them using stereo equipment and lamp wire. Our national organization, Hearing Loss Association of America, now focuses on getting hearing loops in venues across the country. European countries have a huge head start. We need to catch up. Rhode Island only has 21 hearing loops, as Dave mentioned. If this happened to be a European state, we'd have a thousand of them in place. Based upon the, the success of the Rhode Island Commission on Disabilities program called Livable Homes Modification Grant, I created our website, hearingloopri.org, and gained the support of our local hearing loss group. With David's support, we approached the new executive director of the Commission on Deaf and Hard of Hearing, Ernest Covington, to ask for support. We needed a managing organization for this project. Based upon the Livable Homes Modification Grant, we would need $100,000 demonstration grant and a managing organization. Under the grant, anyone or organization wanting to add a hearing loop to a meeting room would receive up to 50% of the cost of the grant, but within certain limits. Ernest liked and supported this project. We need to move forward soon because more than ever, isolation is a cause for reduced physical and emotional health. In today's environment, we have limited personal contact, keep six foot distance and wear face masks. Also some communicate with technology, but all of this contributes to more isolation for people with hearing loss. It is well known that isolation causes faster decline in personal health and happiness. Our website, hearingloopri.org, is focused mainly on hearing loops for meeting rooms and churches. However, hearing loops work well in one-to-one -one situations. They can be used with TV, video calls, and small offices such as doctor's offices. With these items, small amplifier and a thread of wire, it's easy to build a personal hearing loop. These can be used for video calls and one-to-one -one meetings, including meetings with people who are separated by glass or plexiglass barrier. Wearing face masks or separated by greater distances. People will hear better. We expect to see hearing loops in library meeting rooms and churches as we see an aging population coping with new lifestyle over the next two years. I want to thank Ernest Covington and the Commission on Deaf and Hard of Hearing for their support for this important project. Thanks, Dave. All right, uh, thank you, Myron. Uh, Myron is a very smart guy, both on hearing loops and computers. He's rescued me several times from my goofs. Uh, now I'd like to turn to Joyce. Joyce May, please start yours. 
Hello, everyone. And I love following Myron, thinking and listening to his ingenuity on making his own hearing loop 30 years ago makes me think this is a good library patron. This is what library patrons do. Um, they create um, solutions for themselves. Um, as David said, um, I'm the assistant director of East Providence Public Library. Um, I'm also the adult services librarian and have been for 18 years. And what that means is I have been in charge of adult programs and programming. Um, one of our library's main goals um, has always been to provide excellent core services to our patrons excellent core library services in a welcoming environment. And I, I want to stress three words in that sentence, core services and welcoming. And I realized I just had the sun, I'm gonna move because the sun has just come through my window. So let me see if I can change that a little for you. Um, so again, I wanna welcome three words in that sentence core services and welcoming. And I'm sure many people listening today um, are library users, but many folks today still think of core library services as circulation, the loaning of books and library materials, and reference, which means you can ask a librarian a question. In the past 25 years or so, however, programming has become a core service. Our library, and East Providence is a city of about 48,000 people, sees 220,000 people visit each year. A year ago, in 2018, um, when we were, actually last year when we were doing a long-range plan and looking at our 2018 data, we learned that we did 999 programs, approximately 500 of which took place in the Champlin program room, which is the site of our hearing loop. These programs fall into several categories, educational programs such as presentations and lectures, cultural programs, films, um, artist series, lectures, book signings, and finally, sheer entertainment and recreational programs. Um, we have concerts, we have plays, we have one-person acting shows. I am not exaggerating. <laughs> My colleagues will tell you she loves to exaggerate, but I am not. Well, we have thousands of people, adults and children, who enjoy programs and services that support self-education, social connections, and lifelong learning. Now, um, I also want to note that besides the many library programs in the Champlin Program Room, we host many outside agencies. We offer our physical space to many outside agencies, from nonprofit organizations to historical societies to civic organizations, uh, the League of Women Voters, and so on. Um, we make that space available for free to the entire community, if not the entire state. Um, so we have many, many people using our program room. It is in constant use. All of which leads me to why we installed a hearing loop at the East Province Public Library. Um, I actually met David, and I realized Myron told me yesterday he was at that same meeting several years ago, um, where David and other speakers spoke about the effectiveness of hearing loops. Um, not only did we hear excellent speakers, um, there was also a panel of users, of people who were hard of hearing, who spoke about hearing with a hearing loop system for the first time. They spoke of the clarity of the sound. They spoke of the ease of use. But what I remembered is that they cried. There were people on that panel who cried. I still get chills when I think about it as to when they were able to hear what they heard with a hearing loop for the first time. 
it was powerful. Um, they also spoke about something that Myron addressed in his talk, and that was social isolation. That some of these folks had left exercise classes. They definitely left activities in public spaces, spaces such as films or plays or lectures. And of course, that brings me back to the library. I do not want to see anyone leaving a library activity, not feeling welcome at a library activity because they are hard of hearing. That is not inclusive and libraries are inclusive. We are free and open to all and that includes those folks who suffer from hearing loss. So a hearing loop has so many advantages. As David mentioned, it is effective, it is reliable, it is seamless, and the research that I read then and that I continue to read shows that it is preferred by those who are hard of hearing. No additional equipment is needed, and I've, I have worked with the public now for 18 years, and this is a point I really appreciate, that no one stands out. No one who is hard of hearing is going to stand out when they enter a program room. The hearing loop is always on. They don't need additional equipment. They do need to, you know, check with their T-coil, make sure that is on, but they don't need to ask for special assistance, which also means if you're a library listening to this, you need no additional staff to help anyone. Um, the general public is there and the show may go on. Um, I do also, I mentioned um, to David that often as a library programmer, in working with presenters, there are many who say they don't need a microphone. With a hearing loop, the sound must come through a microphone or a sound system. So there's never any questions around that. Um, so I feel we are offering this state-of-the-art um, assistive device or system to all our patrons in a seamless way. We're increasing access for all people to our library activities. Um, I am so looking forward to returning um, to a library that will be able to fill our program room to capacity. Um, and prior to that, I will be doing lots of promotion around the fact that the East Providence Public Library now has a hearing loop. Thank you, David. Thank you for inviting me to be part of this. Thank you, Joyce. It's wonderful to see such enthusiasm. And uh, we welcome the East Providence Library into the places that have hearing loops from Rhode Island. Thank you all for participating and for our audience. Uh, I encourage you to take a look at hearingloopri.org and I'll ask uh, that, that link be put up on the screen at the end. Thank you all and goodbye.